very kind. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure of you that a lot of you looking in now are thinking to yourselves, where is the little old man who usually comes on with it? <laughs> I'm very sorry to have to tell you this, but that little old man, as you call him, <laughs> has met with a very nasty accident. You might say to yourselves, so what? <laughs> You're good enough on your own. <laughs> and you don't need that little old man. That wouldn't be fair, even though it's true. <laughs> At the moment, that little old man is in considerable pain because of his desire for realism. Tonight, we had intended to do a fantastic ballet routine. <laughs> and this afternoon, he attempted to do the splits. <laughs> Difficult enough at the best of times, but very often fatal for little old men. <laughs> <laughs> he was attempting to do the splits, and he failed to notice, ladies and gentlemen, a six-inch nail <laughs> sticking up out of the floorboards. When he made contact with the offending nail, he let out. <laughs> I just thought of something else, but it didn't matter. <laughs> he let out a blood-curdling cry and shot 16 feet into the air and landed, and this is most important, and landed with his full weight on some lady's plate of cockles. <laughs> However, he has insisted on appearing here tonight. So let's have a nice, warm, friendly welcome for the little old man, uh. Good evening. Did you hear that then? In agony he is, and he comes out with the strappy out labors of good evening. That's fantastic. I must say, it's marvelous, Ernst, to see you here tonight. Thank you. In your condition. And I am speaking on behalf of every drunken member in our audience. 90%, I'm told, tonight. Well, you know what we professionals are. The show must go on. How does he think of them? <laughs> I must put that down on a piece of paper. You make it all up as you go along, do you? Oh, yes. It's fantastic. You're privileged tonight, ladies and gentlemen, because tonight you are looking at a genius on a stick. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, can I ask you something? Yes. Are you ready for it? Re ready? I mean, the show. Oh! Can you carry on? Oh, no, I won't be able to do the ballet dancing, as you can see what, by my what, condition. What? You know, I won't be able to do it, will I? No. But I'd like to thank you very much for telling the ladies and gentlemen about my nasty accident, and I do appreciate it very much. Thank you. That's the least I can do. How long have we been together now? Oh, by such years. Longer than that, I thought. Yes. 31 years to boot. 31 years. And I feel that between you and I, that there runs the golden thread of friendship. Ah, oh, that's very nice. The golden thread of friendship. Yes. That's a lovely thing. The golden Seeing thread. The... Yes. Ah. Seeing the, the you golden be... thread. Yes. Seeing the, the golden thread. <laughs> Don't push it too hard. People think we're plugging marmalade. We've got a crate on the doorstep when we get back home now. <laughs> that's a perfect description of our relationship. A crate on the doorstep. <laughs> All I'm trying to do is raise the cultural level of the show. You won't do it doing that. Put a little bit of dignity in it. And why not? I mean, you've seen the ballet, haven't Many you? Many times. Well, I mean, it's very difficult, isn't it? Of course it is. Of course it's difficult. I mean, some of those ballet movements are fantastic. They are. The fellas jump up in the air like that. Ah! Don't move! Did I hit your leg? I can't hit my leg, you fool. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> the golden thread, Ern. What do you mean, the golden thread? The golden thread. The golden thread. The golden thread. <laughs> You see, <laughs> some of those ballet dancers are very highly trained, you know. Some of them are highly strung as well. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> but they have to be. <laughs> when they jump up like that and they go back. Ah! Did I get your leg again? Did I get your leg? Of course. I'm you're... terribly sorry. <laughs> the golden thread. The, go the golden thread. And you see, Eric, <laughs> I went round to the ballet school this afternoon to see what it was all about. It was very interesting. Yes? Yes, I learned something was, about... Uh, was Rudolf Nureyev there? Rudolf Nureyev? Yes. Yes, he was there. Did he do this to you? He... Oh, no. Oh, you're lucky. No, I did this <laughs> while I was doing a very difficult ballet movement. Really? Yes. 
Would you like to hear about it? Well, why not? We've got nothing else to do. Oh, that's true. There's nothing on TV tonight? No. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you. Oh, would you mind just holding my stick? You see, I was doing this dance, you see, and I was in the middle of this dance, and these two big fellas, these two big husky fellas, Big husky. muscular, husky, muscular fellas. That's a new word. Husky. Two big muscular fellas were supposed to come on, you see, and carry me up in the air like that. Yes. And then when the music reached its climax, they had to throw me through the air. You were hurled through the air? I was hurled through the air. How far? Oh, about 30 feet, you see. Now, Rudolph, the big muscular ballet dancer, was waiting there to catch me, you see. 30 feet away? 30 feet away. That's a hell of a throw, isn't it? It is. But what happened was, the music reached its climax. They hurled me through the air. And as I was in full flight, I looked. And to my horror, yes. Rudolph, the ballet dancer, had gone for his dinner. <laughs> and you're 15 feet to go? Yes. <laughs> he got sad, that. That's sad, that. He gone for his dinner in my time. Disgusting. I'll tell you, it wasn't funny. Be fair. He's got to eat. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose all the other ballet dancers were eating, you oh, see? Yes, of course they were. Yes? And that is when you landed on that lady's plate of cockles. Yes! That lady was Dame Margot Fontaine. She is cockle mad, I'm told. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Always has a quick pint before she goes on. Yeah. Boom. And that's how I busted my leg, you see. I see. Excuse me. And I've got my arm in a sling. Sad, really. I've been at the hospital all day. Have you? Having it fixed. <laughs> reset. That's better. Yes. <laughs> we, can do it now. we can do it again if I were you. Go back and get it reset. I haven't had anything to eat. I'm starving. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Do you fancy a quick winkle? I wouldn't mind. You look the type. Okay. Yeah, be careful. Will I'm you sorry, but I'll get your leg again. Yes, you did. Forget it. <laughs> the golden thread of French. Never mind about the golden thread of French. <laughs> <laughs> Horatio Jellico Hardy. <laughs> Dear Mum and Dad. I was taking an hour to put that down. <laughs> Dear Mum and Dad, that's all I've got in an hour. 
How well he writes those plays of his, I'll never know. Twelve is written today. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Mum and Dad, an hour it's taken me. What are you talking to yourself for, Eric? I don't know. I'm told when I get to my age, you do that. Get off. It's true. It <laughs> Joking, I'm not. Hello. The genius has mixed all the records up again. Look at that. The best of the Beach Boys. That's mine. Pickety Witch. That's mine. You've got me by the hollies. <laughs> Harry Lauder, keep right on till the end of the road. That's right. <laughs> Mary Lloyd, a little of what you fancy does you good. <laughs> Poor fella, can only listen to it now. <laughs> <laughs> the Ricardo. Tip Willow. Sung by Nanky Poo. <laughs> Nanky Poo? Sounds like an Indian group. <laughs> You'll never miss them. <laughs> Hello, Oscar. Oscar? Oscar what? I'm not interested in pop singers. Oh. <laughs> I'm an author. What have you been doing in the other room? Perusing my synopsis. Well, every man needs a hobby. <laughs> How's the play doing? Finished. How many is that you've written today in that suit? <laughs> Twelve. You look like a brown ale. Yes. <laughs> Trendy, this is. Twelve, eh? Yes, yeah, twelve. All I've got to do is phone the guest star and I'll invite him round for tea. You invite him round for tea? Yeah, invite him round for tea, you know, to discuss the play. Good idea. That's all I'm going to do. Yep. Hello. Hello. Working? Oh, you're here. I've got that. <laughs> Have you seen my Nanky Poo? <laughs> if I have, it was quite accidental, I promise you that. <laughs> There's been interfering with these records. I can't... I haven't got time to look for it now. I must phone the guest star. Who's it going to be, the guest star? Vanilla Fielding. <laughs> What's the matter? You fool. What? You're not inviting Vanilla back on the show after, are you? Yeah, of course I am. After the way she treated you on that Lord Nelson sketch. I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. You were limping for three weeks after that. <laughs> she fancies you like magic. Knock out about you, you know. Why, why do you think I got it back? When you get to my age. <laughs> What's that mean? Well... <laughs> Hello? Miss Vanilla Fielding? Oh, I am sorry. She's in bed. Where else? <laughs> Miss Fielding, how would you like to appear in one of the greatest plays ever written? I wrote it. Oh, Ernie Wise. Would you like to come round for tea? You would? What? You're in a remote part of the countryside, but you'll be round as soon as possible. Good. Looking forward to seeing you. Bye-bye. She'll be round as soon as possible. Hello. Hello, Miss Fielding. Hello, Chunky. Chunky! <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey! Would you just come this way, Miss Fielding? Chunky! First of all, I'd like to say how <laughs> delighted I am to see you again. Oh, isn't he gorgeous? I could throw myself at him. Well, don't. He's very small. He could miss. <laughs> Such a long time. We had a lot of fun together, though, didn't we? <laughs> Could I have a word with you, please? I, is there something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Go easy with her. Why? He's lost his nanky poo. <laughs> <laughs> what have you lost? <coughs> My nanky poo. <laughs> He's lost his nanky poo. He's lost his nanky poo. <laughs> and there's worse to come. I hate to tell you this, but it's perused his synopsis as well. <laughs> and I'm only telling you because you're a man of the world. <laughs> Miss Feely, would you care to come and sit down and join us in the cup of tea? Yes, I'd love to. Would you like to tell us something? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be mother? <laughs> I think we'll play safe. I'll be mother. <laughs> I'm warning you about her. Remember that Lord Nelson sketch? I don't know what she did to you that night, but you had to push your bike home. Now remember. <laughs> Look, will you stop? Will you stop interfering, for goodness sake? Do you have 
one of these. They look delicious. Oh, thank you very much. Now, Miss Fielding, if I just tell you about my play, it's a romantic play. Did you say romantic? Yes, romantic. Could I get a word in, please? Will you take your hand off his muffin? <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't realise. Would you stop trying to protect me? I don't want the muffin. You have it. You see, he's off his muffin now. <laughs> but what if he is? On the flare, you are appalling. You think of nothing but food. Yes. Now, I'd just like to tell you <laughs> about my play. It's a tribute to the great Noel Coward. Noel Coward? Yes. He's mad about Noel Coward. I am a mad about Noel Coward. Noel Coward and Gladys Mills. I believe they're one of the same person. <laughs> How do you mean? Well, it was Noel Mills and Gladys Coward. And he had to pick a name, so I picked Noel Coward. To save having to alter his trousers. <laughs> <laughs> what are you rambling on about? I don't know. I'll make it all up as I go along. That's the impression I try and give. <laughs> Green bugs. Don't have one of those. You know they make you walk funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Fee, if I could just tell you about my play. Oh, yes, please. You see, in this play <laughs> that I've written, I play the part of Digby Dunbobby. Oh, isn't he a beautiful little mover? <laughs> <laughs> He's on casters, you know. <laughs> International playboy, boy. Uh, boy. Playboy boy. Playboy. <laughs> International playboy boy. boy. Well, several people at once. <laughs> International playboy and heir apparent. Heir apparent? Yes. That means you can see the join. Yes. <laughs> now, Eric plays the part of Tony Fortescue, a ne'er do well musical comedy composer down on his luck. That's me. But what about me? Ah, uh, 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 haven't you heard? You play a very important part, do I? You play the part of a very bored English lady who is domiciled in Monte Carlo. And it's very painful, I'm told. <laughs> but don't worry, you get it on the national health. Typical Noel Coward plot, don't you think? Oh, yes. Now, tell me, mm. what is the name of this bored English lady? When you find out, you'll flip. You listen to this. Lady Bedworthy. Bedworthy? <laughs> <laughs> what a gorgeous name. Be careful. You're squashing his ecloscape. <laughs> Is there something wrong with him? He look, you see, he's gone all funny. No, he's listening to the tide coming in. Oh. <laughs> <In> stereo. <laughs> Golly, go get back and enjoy life. Uh. Just, I don't know what it is about this lovely little fellow, but whenever I see him, something deep down inside of me goes. <laughs> Miss Fielding, if you just control yourself, I mean... I can't. Are... What do you mean, you can't? I can't control myself. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the hand breaks off. She's gone preserved. I mean, top gear. No, please, don't. And I've always hey, searched in a minute. Take my umbrella to defend please, yourself. Get back, get back, Miss Fielding, please. <laughs> Nothing, but nothing would induce me to give you this key. Here's a pound. That's enough. <laughs> Keep the change. <laughs> please, Miss Fielding, don't come into my boudoir, please, I beg you. Those big blue eyes, they're mine. Yeah. Stop that, Miss Fielding. Those great manly shoulders, they're mine. Oh, give over, give over. Those great big arms, they're mine. Incidentally, yes. when you get to the umbrella, it's mine. <laughs> When the moon is in the seventh house And Jupiter aligns with Mars Then peace will guide the planets And love will see the stars This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius The age of Understanding, sympathy and trust abounding. No more falsehoods or derisions. Golden mystic dreams of visions and the life's the mystic revelation and the mind's true liberation. Jupiter 
This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, 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 Aquarius. Gentlemen, a few days ago, I had a very thrilling experience. And the least said about that, the better. <laughs> I'll be honest, I was a hell of a mess. What do you want? Huh? What do you want? Ah, now, then. What? Can I tell you about my new, if you'll pardon the expression, long player? Well, what's so different about your long player? I'll tell you what's so different about my long player. You haven't seen it, have you? No, I haven't. Well, stay there and I'll go get it. All right. I'll tell you what. What? Sing or dance or do something. All right. Which shall I do first, the song or the dance? Doesn't matter, they're both funny. <laughs> Well, this should be interesting. I don't know what he's up to at all. <laughs> what do you think of that? I've never seen one that big. Not many people have. <laughs> that is the LP, Anne. Are you listening? Yes. Look at me when you're listening. Yes, I'm listening. That is the LP to end all LPs. Gee. Have you played it? No. No, you haven't. Can't find the time. Why not? Takes six weeks. <laughs> six weeks? Just this one side. Well, what's it called? It's the soundtrack from the original show of the same name. <laughs> what show is that? All I Yesterdays. All, all I Yesterdays. With Brian Inglis. Brian Inglis. Yes. yes. A smile, a song, and an atom bomb. <laughs> I like Brian Inglis. He's very. Why good. not? He was a compere of World War II. Yes. <laughs> you can't get better than that. Yes. You need influence for a job like that. And this traces the whole of World War II. It starts before that. Oh yes. On the first track. Mm -hmm. First track. Yes. On this record. There's a little old German lady saying, it's a boy, Mrs. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Put my eye out, then. <laughs> but what else is there on there? I will have a look for you, little Ernie White. <laughs> what? There we are, on the second track. What is it on the second track? I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uncomfortable here, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I look like what? You look like the dog, you know. That was the idea. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't wear glasses, you know, on the... Eh? Doesn't wear glasses, the Give dog. Give a bite out your leg and go home. <laughs> <laughs> on the second track? Yes. You've got Old Man River. 
Classic. A classic from the past. Beautiful. I love it. Yes. Who, who's singing it? Flora Robson. <laughs> she sings it beautifully. But it's got a deep voice and no makeup. That's right. <laughs> what else is there on there? Hey? What else is there on there? On the back of here? Yes. It's family favourite from World War II. Oh, really? That's sung by Gladys Mills when she was professionally known as Vera Lynn. Oh. <laughs> oh, Vera Lynn, one of my favourites. And why not? Yes. Have you played it yet? Well, you can see by this. An LP this size yes. needs a special record player. Oh, I would think so, by the size of it. That could become a catchphrase. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get one. All right. Hold that. Do you want me to fill in while you're away? <laughs> Can you be so me dancer or what? Shall I do I'll some? Just, I'll just do all what if I were you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Swing the record on her! <laughs> You'll never get this big record on that little player there. You could be right. <laughs> Leave it to me, I'll think of something. God, I don't know what he's up to tonight. He's you going don't know what he's up to tonight? He's going mad. You wait till tomorrow night. Well, not working. <laughs> it's full of surprises, I must say. I'll fix it for you. You fix it? Yes. Vera Lynn. Vera Lynn. Watch this. We'll meet again. We'll meet again. Yeah, Give me a hammer, Open the tap. <laughs> you see him? That's all. Vera <laughs> <laughs> we'll Lynn. Vera we'll Lynn, we'll meet again. We'll meet again. And I'll tell you now, what? it's Hagony on the high notes. Hagony on the high notes? Hagony on the high notes. Oh, why do you mean? The vibrations come straight up through the saddle. Come on. <laughs> you know yes. Right. I want to do it for you, got you little fella. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Don't know where. Don't know where. Like 
Christ. <laughs> Can I go ahead? I hope you will. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to present Straight my ahead. play, a tribute to the great Noel Coward entitled, I'll See You Again, Even Though It's Bittersweet, Mrs. Worthington, In a Room With a View. Thank you. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. You, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, something's gone wrong. You put the wrong caps. It's not Birkenhead, it's Monte Carlo. Oh. I thought that was a double act and a phone number. No. <laughs> huh? Put Monte Carlo. Sorry. Is that better? That's better. That's it. That's it. Hey, I've been there. Hey, hey, near the Louvre. Get off. My mother. That's my mother, man. Terribly, frightfully bored I am here in Monte Carlo. I'm so bored that I might even consider going back to the theatre. After all, I was a famous musical comedy actress before I met my late husband, Lord Bedworthy, <laughs> the famous impresario. What a man! 85 and still looking for new talent. <laughs> oh, d'oeuvre! <laughs> Hello. Take me, darling. Lady Bedworthy, do you fancy a chucker? Well, <laughs> have you got time? Oh. Th thought we had a play to do. Oh, yes. I must say, Lady Bedworthy, it's most awfully nice, really, frightfully, terribly, awfully nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were in Monte, darling. Yes, I arrived just at evening. Arrived for the polo. Jolly tiring game. Those horses are very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Come and sit next to me. Oh, thank you very much. Digby. Yes. You know I'm mad about you, don't you? Of course you are, of course you are. And you're mad about me too. Mm, I'm crazy. I can about tell. You. Yes. Your eyes are sparkling. And your face is all bright red. Yeah, I'm sat on my polo stick. <laughs> But tell Lady Bedweather, you know, it must be terribly boring here for you, here in Monte Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you return to your first love, the theatre? Well, darling, I would if only I could find a new musical play. I think I can help you there most frightfully, awfully, terribly. Help me? Yes, I can help you. You see, I've met a ne'er-do-well composer down on his luck. He's very, very clever. He's quite brilliant and has a way with the ladies. Sounds interesting. Yes, yes. I've taken the liberty. Well, so have I, darling, many times. <laughs> I've taken the liberty of inviting me around here to meet you personally. Are you male or female? I don't know. I'll have a look. <laughs> Good Lord, I'm neither. <laughs> Even all? <laughs> Why are you dressed like Long John Silver? <laughs> because it's his birthday, isn't it? <laughs> Whose birthday? Noel's. Noel Collard's? Well, Noel the parrot. <laughs> 70 today. Been in 69 pantomimes and never missed an entrance. <laughs> I don't understand that. Hey? Eh? Oh, I always dress up for him on his birthday. It's a treat. Shall we sing happy birthday to him? He'd be very thrilled. One, two. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you, you know. Happy birthday, birthday, birthday to you. He'd be thrilled about that when he wakes up. I'll tell him. <laughs> now, can I get him with it? You can get up with it if you like. Right. Come in. Lady Bedworthy, may I introduce Long John Fortescue? Ne'er do well composer down on his luck. How do you do? How do you do what? <laughs> have you had an accident? Oh, you've noticed. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have, yes. This morning I was writing a few hits near my French window when I got an airlock in my harmonium. Can it be cured? Only with a rubber pipe, a blow lamp, and the plumber you can trust. <laughs> <laughs> and if I can't get those three things, well, I shall be completely deaf in my right leg for the rest of my life. <laughs> completely deaf in your right leg? Do you speak up, please? <laughs> <laughs> Lady Bedworthy. Pardon? Lady Bedworthy! Not too loud. 
Lady Bedworthy, I feel sure that Tony can write you a hit musical. Of course I can. Really? Oh, yes. What? Tell me, have you ever tried anything in the theatre? Only once. <laughs> and I was slung out. <laughs> Halfway through, a Flash Gordon picture. I'll never forget it, the manager went white. Lady Bedworthy! <laughs> Surely you remember Tony's last West End hit show. Oh, I'm yes, I do. Tie your corsets to a rainbow. That's a what? <laughs> yes, I think I saw that show. Oh, it was you. <laughs> it was at the Garrick Theatre, wasn't it? Well, the very same, sir. A beautiful theatre. Named after that famous actor, Sir David Theatre. <laughs> well, I'm most impressed. Oh. What are you really what looking for? It's a song. Got, um, uh... <laughs> suit my personality. You want a song that will suit your personality? Yes, I think that's what I said. I'm sure it was what you said. Well, when the numbness goes... <laughs> you think I could knock one off for you? Yeah. How about, roll me over in the clover, lay me down and do it again, cha-cha-cha. <laughs> No, 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 no. I feel sure she doesn't like that sort of tune at all. Oh, what's the use? I'm so terribly, frightfully bored. I can't take much more of this, I tell you. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Did you like it? Excellent. Shall I do it again? Have you got the nerve? <laughs> I can't stand much more of this, I tell you. I can't. I can't. <laughs> what's it? Look out, there's a policeman. <laughs> you could have lit that. Nice. Yes. I'm all alone in this room with a view. <laughs> I got it. Well, let's have a look. Cheeky. <laughs> I mean, I've got <laughs> the inspiration. What a song. Where's the piano? We haven't got one. Never mind, this will do. <laughs> if I'd have known you were so ill, I would have come sooner. <laughs> I shall now compose A Room of the Vu. A brilliant title. <laughs> but isn't it a little bit like Noel Carr? <laughs> is that... Is that so surprising? I... <laughs> I don't understand. Because, madam... Noel's cards. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm a ghost. Somebody's let the cut in. <laughs> I try to keep it a secret, but he is, yes, he is the great Noel's cowards. Oh, dearest Noel, I can hardly believe it. Look at that stylish walk. <laughs> Noel's, please, compose one of your melodies for me. <laughs> Composing that. Perhaps you'll write something romantic for me. When I finish composing a room with a view, I'm going back to my digs. I'm going to turn the mattress over <laughs> and compose his happy breed. <laughs> I want to hear you compose a room with a view. And so you shall! So you shall! <laughs> you shall! Where's A on this piano? A flat. No, A room. <laughs> find a room, I'll find a view for myself. <laughs> they don't have the words on the keyboard, just the notes. That makes it difficult. <laughs> What's the map in the chart? Uh, they're out of order. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it myself. <laughs> la da 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 da. La da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da. La da. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Come in! <laughs> well, wait a minute. Just a moment, please. There's no bed in my play. I told you that. Take that bed away. Where would you like it, Miss Fielding? There's no answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it down there. Thank you very much. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> what are we going to do now? I don't know, but I could get a few laughs along the way. <laughs> now, please, Miss Feely, I don't want that bed in this play. I told you that. Oh, don't be so stuffy. Hmm. Now we've got the bed, we can forget about the play. We can have a lovely time. As a thought. We can have a picnic. Not. We can play snakes and ladders. <laughs> Happy families. Never had donuts in bed. Look, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's my girl. Leave her alone. Good idea, that. I tell you what we'll do. Him and I will go behind that screen. Yes. And we'll get into something more comfortable. Yes. All right then? Yes. <laughs> you play your cards right. This could be opportunity knocks for you. Oh, do you think so? Yes. <laughs> I'll fix it for you. Don't worry. I do. I tell you something, I'm very worried. There's nothing to be worried about. Nothing at all. Leave everything to me. Well, I don't like it. Eh? I don't like it. Let's have a look. <laughs> sure, dear. Are you ready? Yeah. Right. Are you ready? Of course. Come on, then. <laughs> uh, bring me sunshine in your smile. Bring me laughter all the while. World where we live, there should be more happiness. So much joy you can give to each brand new bright tomorrow. Make me happy through the years. Never bring me any tears. Let your arms be as warm as the sun from up above. Bring me fun. Bring me sunshine, bring me